Hey, welcome back. Today we are looking at um, finding areas and values in a normal distribution. And this is something we are going to use all throughout this statistics course. So this is a very important lesson. Um, so we, are have, we have two learning targets. First, finding the proportion of values within a certain interval in a normal distribution and finding a value that corresponds to a given percentile um, so that we can figure out where we are on the normal curve. Um, so we're gonna do an activity and I'm gonna walk through that with you. Your homework is listed on Canvas for today. So our activity today is called, Will Marty Make It Back to the Future? And as you might expect, we are using some Back to the Future references here. So um, if you haven't seen the movie, um, Doc and Marty are the main characters. And Doc is building a time machine out of a DeLorean sports car. And once it accelerates for 20 seconds, um, then Doc records the speed that the DeLorean has reached and he keeps meticulous records. So he has a notebook full of all of these speeds that, that the DeLorean has reached after um, accelerating for 20 seconds. And the speeds that he records are normally distributed with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 7.7 .7 miles per hour. So the first thing I want you to do is to label this normal curve with the information that I just told you and label the first, second, and third standard deviation above and below the mean. So the first thing that I wanna point out is that the number one thing you always do when we work with normal uh, distributions and a normal curve is we always indicate that this is a normal distribution or a normal curve and we give um, the specifics for the data that we're working with that distinguish it from others, which is the mean and the standard deviation. So we designate it's normal by using a big old capital N, and then in parentheses, just like a coordinate, we put the mean followed by the standard deviation. So that tells us what um, this distribution's, um, the, what this distribution looks like. So what I would like you to do is to um, label the first, the three standard deviations above and below the mean, and then use your flip book from class, and you're going to answer questions two, three, four, and five. And when you finish up with those, come on back and uh, pause the video while you're working come on back and we'll check those answers and then we'll move on to the back side of the activity. Okay, so let's take a look and check what you got. So first of all, as you label your um, normal curve, you should have ended up with that mean right in the middle of 80. And these are the values. You got 87.7, 95.4, 103.1. On the bottom side, you have 72.3, 64.6. 56.9. Um, going through this activity then, what percent of the runs will the DeLorean, will give the DeLorean a speed greater than 87.7 miles per hour? So for this one, we're looking at anything greater than 87.7. So we just wanna know what percent of our distribution is in this area right here. So greater than 87.7. So as you um, put that together, you're probably gonna take this section and this section and then greater than three and add those together. And when you do that, you get 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0.15, which gives us 16%. There are other ways to calculate that value as well, but that's probably the one that most of you are going to do. Um, what percent will give a speed between 64.6 and 87.7? So that's from here to here, which means everything in between. So again, you're gonna add those sections together. We get 68 plus 13.5 or 81.5%. Next up, what percent will be less than 64.6? 6. 
So that's everything down here that's just past the second and the third standard deviations. So those are those two small ones. So we get 2.35 plus 0.15 or two and a half percent. Finally, number five, you might have run into some problems on this one because as you can see, it asks for what percentage of the runs give a speed that is less than 68.45. 68.45 is not on our normal curve. It's not one of our standard deviation values. Um, so it's in between the second and third standard deviation. You may have even gone so far as to notice that it is right halfway in between. So what a lot of kids try to do at this point, what a lot of people would try to do is to find that area of the shaded region, they would say, well, it's halfway in between. So we're gonna take that um, uh, 13 and a half percent that's between the second and the first standard deviation right in here, and we're gonna split it in half. The problem with that is we can tell pretty clearly that that area right there and this area right here are not the same size but it will give us a good estimate. So if we split that 13 and a half in half, that section right there, plus these ones as you extend outward, would give us a total area of approximately 9.25%. Now, that is not, however, the correct way to calculate the area less than 68.45 or less than or equal to 68.45, what we actually need to do is use a z-score. So if we change 68.45 to a z-score, um, we would want to take the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and that would give us a z-score of negative 1.5. Now, we're gonna use a tool that we haven't used before. So you're gonna need your formula packet, your formula sheet that I gave you last week. So go ahead and get that out, pause the video if you need to, and find table A. It's going to be the second page of your formula sheet. Okay, so this is table A, and what this tells us is the tail area of a normal curve or a normal distribution of values, um, which tells us how, what proportion of the data values are to the left side of a particular z-score. So the z-score that we need is negative 1.5. So the way that this works is your z-scores are in the first column, but then we have these additional columns to give us our hundredths place. So since we need negative 1.5, we're gonna go all the way down to negative 1.5, and we didn't have any additional decimals that went, it was exactly right in the middle. So we want the intersection of negative 1.5 and the 0 .00 column, which means we're looking at the z-score, 0.668. So that would be, sorry, not our z-score, that's the area to the left of the z-score of negative 1.5. So, that means that on this problem number five, the area from table A is 0 0.0668. So therefore that tells us we have 6.68% of the runs would be 68.45 miles per hour or less. So we need to form formalize this a little bit. And there are some steps that you really need to make sure that you have included in your work, in the writing it out that you include to get full credit on these problems. So let's walk through a problem together, and I'm going to show you my expectations, and these are, um, it's expecting some writing and some details that you might not be used to including this much, but it is super important to keep everything organized so that you can communicate your reasoning behind the problem. And what this will do is it will allow you to make sure you've checked all the boxes that you would need to get full credit on a problem like this for not only a test for me, but also on the AP exam. Okay, so let's take a look. There's actually four steps to these problems. The first step is to draw 
an unstandardized picture of your normal distribution with the normal curve, symbol, and your mean and standard deviation identified, and then shade the area of interest. So for this problem, number six, what percent of the runs will give the DeLorean a speed greater than 85 miles per hour? We would draw our normal distribution. We want to label that um, mean and standard deviation and identify it's a normal distribution. And then the next step would be to mark where are we interested in looking at these particular values and we want speeds greater than 85. So we're going to mark 85 and then we're going to shade everything to the right since we're interested in what percent of the values are greater than 85. Our next step is to draw an un, or a, sorry, a standardized picture of our distribution. So if we were to standardize these values, we would have your standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. We would still want to mark that spot exactly right underneath where 85 was. We're gonna be at the same location in our normal distribution, but we're gonna have a z-score and we still are interested in all of the values that are to the right or greater than that value. We just don't know what that z-score is yet. So that's where step three comes in. We want to include our z-score formula and the calculations. And by calculations, I don't mean I need you to write out your multiplication or your subtraction. I just mean, I mean that I need to see you plug in your numbers and show me how you're going to um, get the values from that problem. So our formula is z equals value minus mean over standard deviation. We're gonna keep that really generic because there's gonna be multiple uh, z-score formulas throughout this course. Um, and then we plug in our numbers. So 85 is the value we're interested in finding a z-score for. 80 is our mean, 7.7 is our standard deviation, which gives us a z-score of 0.649. So I'm actually gonna put that on my standardized curve. Step four then is to find our final answer. So we're not interested in just a z-score. We want to know what's the area to the right of 85. So what's the area to the right of that z-score? So we got to grab tab table A and then when we go to table A, Recall that on table A, this is only telling us the area to the left of a z-score. So what we have to think about here is if I go find my value that was my z-score, 0.649, so let's clear this off. We want 0.649, which means we're gonna go on the positive side, so it's on the back. 0.649, my decimal places only go to hundredths, so we're gonna use 0.65, okay? So you get your 0.6 from the first column and it's 0.05, so you put those together, you have 0.65, which means they intersect right here and this is the value we get, 0.7422. Now, that's the area to the left of that z-score. So that would be, 0.7422 is to the left. So how do we find the area to the right? Well, this is a density curve. And we know density curves have a, have a total area of one, which means all we have to do is subtract 0.7422 from one to get our area to the right. So this area right here corresponds to that. This one corresponds to the shaded. Okay, now that's not quite our final answer because they didn't want an area. We want a percent of runs that are greater than 85 miles per hour, which would be 25.78%. So you've got to change that to a percent. And ideally, we would put that in a complete sentence. 25.78% of runs are greater than 85 miles per hour. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to pause the video right here and work problems seven and eight. Now these aren't completely straightforward. They're gonna require you to do some critical thinking about how you're going to find the values. So if you get stuck, that's fine. Try the next one, come back, and we will review the solutions to these two problems.
Okay, let's take a look at number seven. Hopefully you got a little ways with this one and maybe you even got a solution. So let's see how you did. So what percent of the runs will give the DeLorean a speed between 70 and 95 miles per hour? I hope you showed your work and used all four steps that we talked about. That first step, drawing our unstandardized distribution, centered it set 80 with a standard deviation of 7.7, .7, and we're looking at the values between 70 and 95. So we're gonna label and mark those two spots on our curve. It's not super necessary that they be 100% accurate here. Obviously, they're gonna be a little bit off, but we definitely wanna make sure that we're kind of estimating where those would be and where the appropriate spot to put them would be, because that's gonna help us recognize if our answer makes sense. So then we shade in between, because that's exactly what we're looking for. What percent of our distribution is between those values? Then we draw our standardized curve, exactly the same. We gotta find those z-scores. So we use our z-score formula. We're gonna plug it in for both of our values. So the z-score for 70 is negative 1.3, and the z-score for 95 is 1.95. Now. We're going to use table A, and for now we're just going to look up these values and see what they tell us. So on table A, we find the area to the left of negative 1.3 as a z-score is 0 0.0968. So that's this area right here, okay? That's to the left over here, 0 0.0968. It's not the area that we want, but we're going to be able to use it. So the next one is the area to the left of 1.95 on our curve, which is highlighted in pink, and that from the table is 0.9744. So if we have this whole area right here, but we don't need this chunk right here, all we have to do is subtract these two areas to get the area of what's left in the middle. So we take 0.9744 minus 0.0968, and we get 0.8776, which tells us that we have 87.76% are between 70 and 95. Okay, let's take a look at number eight. This one required you to work backwards. So Marty wants his last run to be in the top 15% of all possible speeds. So of all the speeds that they've had, he wants to be in that top 15%. So what speed does he need to be to be in the top 15%? So we draw our unstandardized curve, just like we did before. We label our mean and our standard deviation, and we mark our area. But this time, we're not marking it because it's at a certain value. We're marking the top 15%, which means we want everything to the right of that line, and that is 15% of our data or has an area of 0.15. Now, we still are gonna go to the next step. We're gonna draw and shade our unstandardized curve. So this question mark is here because we don't know what that value is. That's what we're trying to find. Our unstandardized curve, we're gonna draw to look exactly the same. Again, we don't know that z-score, but here's the thing, when we look this up in the table, we're looking at the left-handed tail area and we were told we want it to be greater than. So what we wanna consider is if there's 15% of my data up here, there's 85% of my data down here. So what I think you should do is if you need to pause the video and go back and check if you didn't find, get this far before and look up the area of 0.85. So be careful, you're gonna look in this section of your chart, not this way. You're not looking up a z-score, you're looking up an area. So look up the area of 0.85 and see what you find. Get the closest one you can. Okay, do you see it? It's actually right here on my page. We've got point. 8508. That's as close as we're going to get, which means we're looking at a z score of 
1.04. So we go back, that means our z-score right there is 1.04, and now we need to work backwards to get a speed. What speed is that? So we use our z-score formula, except this time we know our z-score and we're missing our value. Do your algebraic math magic and find the value by working backwards, isolate that word or that variable, and you get 88 miles per hour. 88 miles per hour, that's what Marty wants his last speed to be. Why? Because at 88 miles per hour, the DeLorean can travel through time. Okay, so I will link a clip of that if you wanna watch it. We watched it in class, it was great, made me wanna watch the movie. Here are your big ideas, and this is just a summary of what we just talked about and those four important steps. We can use table A and to find the area under any normal curve, or if we're working with any normal distribution. We have to follow these four steps. You must do these four things for full credit. Draw your non-standardized curve, label it, and shade your bounded areas. Draw your unstandardized curve, or sorry, your standardized curve. Label it, which will always be an N with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and shade your boundaries on this as well, or draw your boundaries and shade your areas of interest. Step three was, is where we work with our Z-score. We show our formula, we plug in our numbers, whether we're plugging in the Z-score or we're plugging in the value. Sometimes we might even have to find our mean or our standard deviation that's missing. Show how you're plugging in the numbers and show your formula. Step four, grab your table, find your final answer. Whether you are working forwards from a z-score to find an area or backwards from an area to find a z-score. This part right here, careful with your equal sign, is super important. You never ever want to put an equal sign from a z-score to an area. These things are not equal. The z-score produces or tells us about the area. They're related, but they're not equal. So do not put equal signs between those two. Don't use equal signs willy-nilly all over your paper. Only use equal signs for equations that you are um, wanting to state are equal. And always be careful to remember that table A is only a left-tailed area. So you can use the symmetry of a normal curve um, for your benefit to save you some steps, or you can use the fact that the density curve has an area of one, but just be very careful not to assume that the area is the area you are looking for if it's not a left-tailed left area. Okay, so that's density curves and normal distributions. Like I said, we're gonna use this all throughout statistics, so it's super important that you really understand this. I want you to do the four problems on the next page in your packet, the section 2-2 review worksheet, and be ready tomorrow to bring those to class and to um, dig in and make sure that we, that we have this concept down.